Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled An, An Intuitive Explanation of Flux Gate Current Sensing, and it's a part three of a sequence entitled Multiple Rings Closed Loop. The next part will cover sensors with magnetic flux concentrators. There are some relevant videos to this presentation. First of all, there are the part one and part two, and there is an introductory video that covers simulation, and these are the links, and I'm going to print the links and the description of the YouTube video that you are now watching. Let me start with some recapping of the basics so we can uh, rely on it going on with the subject matter of this presentation. Now, Fluxgate is a technology by which we have a inductor, which is non-linear in the sense that it goes into saturation due to the BH curve, like in a ferrite, say, a ferrite core, and then we excite it so as to push it toward the saturation limits, and then if we have a magnetic flux which penetrates this core, then we are sort of moving the uh, quiescent point from zero to, say, some point here, and then as we swing the core or the BH curve up and down, we have some asymmetry which results in a second harmonics which is indicative of this offset here. So this is actually a way to measure the current which is causing this offset. Typical waveforms here will be, this is the excitation, this is the flux, and we can see that it goes into saturation. The current will be part-time of relatively low value because the inductor is sort of limiting the current, but then as the core goes into saturation, let's say here, then the current is limited by the series resistor of the excitation. Here it is, this resistor is actually limiting the current when this inductor actually collapses when it goes into saturation. So by looking now at this asymmetry, we can actually tell as to whether there is an outside field or current which is affecting the offset. And this can be done by looking at the second harmonics, which tells us about the asymmetry. And the second harmonics can be obtained by multiplying the signal. This, is, this will be here the current of the inductor or the source by the a frequency which is twice the switching frequency of the excitation. And then if the, the signal is symmetrical, then we are going to have a symmetrical waveform for the second harmonic with an average of zero. However, if we have an external field due to either magnetic field or the current that we are measuring, which are moving the operating point, then the waveform becomes asymmetrical and therefore it will have a second harmonic component, which we can detect again by multiplying it with the twice the frequency. And in this case, we see that we have an average which is non-zero. In the spectrum, we can clearly see now the second harmonic as compared to the case with no excitation or with no measured current, say, in which there is practically no second harmonic. So this is a way to measure current, and the very simple setup will consist of a ring or a toroid in, on which we have windings. Here is the excitation, which is pushing the BH curve to the limits. This is the wire that we, have, that we want to measure the current off, and we look at the current of this excitation, and this is the demodulator, which is doing this uh, multiplication by the twice the switching frequency, and then we have a low-pass filter for getting a sort of a DC component, which is representing this asymmetry, and in turn, it actually reflects what is the value of the current in this line. Now, the disadvantage of this uh, very simple configuration is that we have a large signal here, which has a lot of the first harmonic and other harmonic other components, 
and therefore it is a little bit difficult to extract the information that we want, the second harmonic, which is relatively small as compared to other signal, which is mixed here. So one way to remedy this would be to use two toroids, two rings, that we excite in opposite direction. So this is the excitation, and we have a flux going this way and this way. This is done by, of course, the direction of the windings. And then we have the wire that we want to measure the current of. This field now, due to this current, is on the same direction. So now, we have now two signals, which are coming of opposite direction. So the first harmonic of these signals is the same, because they are exposed to the same type of excitation, but the signals of are opposite, so by subtracting these, we actually can subtract the first harmonic and some other components, and we are left with the second harmonic, so therefore our sensitivity and robustness of uh, signal to noise is improving, and therefore this is a much better solution. To demonstrate the operation of this approach, I have here a empty spice schematics, these are the two inductors, two toroids, you might say. I'm showing here two excitation in opposite direction, okay? These are now the representing the current or the field or the magnetic flux due to the current that we want to measure, same direction on the two. And then we have a subtraction here. This will do the subtraction and multiplication by twice the frequency to extract the second harmonic. And here are the results of the simulation. This is the case with no measured current, so the waveforms are symmetrical, and when we subtract, or this is now in opposite direction, so we have to add, then we get a zero, net zero result, and therefore the output of the second harmonic, multiplying it by second harmonic, will also be zero, of course. But if there is a signal that we want to measure, then it is shifting the operating point. The signal becomes asymmetrical. We see here the wider pulse than here. So when we subtract the two, or add in this case because they are opposite direction, we have this difference here. And of course, when we multiply it by this uh, twice the frequency to extract the Second harmonic, we have a signal, this is after filtering, and in this case we get 0.5 volt. So this is a much better solution. However, this solution relies on the operation of the ferromagnetic material. And if it is changing due to temperature, etc., we may get a, a different response. So this is an open loop operation, and we can improve on it by operating the system in closed loop. The idea is that we have now a feedback with winding that cover the two toroids, such that when we inject the current here, we can cancel the flux due to the current which is measured. So in this case, we are looking for zero. We are not looking for a value but we are increasing this current to the point that the net flux will be zero, and this we are detecting by the same method, but here we are detecting zero, just the zero, not the value. And then we have a feedback here that actually looks for a steady point at which the voltage here is very small. This is a high gain amplifier. So we are looking for zero here, which means that the two fluxes cancel each other, and therefore the current, which is the feedback current, is actually reflecting the measured current by the turns ratio. We have n turns here. The measured current is one turn, so the current here, when we reach cancellation, is the measured current divided by n. So this 
system is of course much much better because we are not measuring a value which depends on the parameters of the system of the components but rather looking for a zero and therefore we get a much higher accuracy. However, the main problem with this system is that the bandwidth is rather limited because this operation of feedback requires an amplifier which has a limited bandwidth and also this demodulation and the filtering also limits the bandwidth. So a better solution which can provide much higher accuracy and stability and bandwidth is using three rings or three cords. These two are operating as before. The third one is used in order to boost the bandwidth. So let's see how does it work. When we are at a relatively low frequency of DC, we have the two cords. Operation is the same. We are measuring the current here, subtracting it, and then feeding into the power amplifier, measuring the current of the feedback. So this is as I've shown before. The output of this core is very low at DC zero because there is no flux change. And at low frequency, it's also very low because the voltage is dependent on the feed dt or the IDT, and if the frequency is low, low frequency, then of course the sensitivity is very low and the voltage that we can see here will be extremely small. So therefore at low frequency this story really doesn't contribute much of a signal here. However, as we increase the frequency or if we measure a higher frequency, then we start seeing here a signal. Now this signal is being added to the low frequency signal which is coming from here. So it cont contributes to the feedback such that the current now is also reflecting the high, higher frequency. So therefore we have a better now uh, performance for this mid frequency both for the DC component if there is any and the uh, medium frequency that might be here in the measured current. As we go to the mid frequency, the much higher frequency, then of course this signal becomes larger and we reach a point at which these toroids and this uh, two core arrangement does not contribute much because the bandwidth is rather limited here. So we are primarily getting feedback from this coil and again since the frequency is higher we get a good signal here so we can feed it to the amplifier and then cancel out flux due to the measured current. Now as the frequency goes even higher, then this amplifier does not contribute anything because we are beyond the bandwidth of the amplifier. However, we are left here with a AC transformer. This is the primary, the measured current, one turn. This is the secondary. So there is a coupling between this current and this feedback used to be feedback it's not feedback anymore it is just a secondary winding here and therefore the current here is again n times lower than the measured current and this will be for high frequency so in this range there's really no feedback but we are just relying on the fact that we have a current transformer in which the current of the secondary is a function of the current of the primary and the transfer ratio is just the t number of turns. So let me just summarize what we have seen here. Flat gate is really useful technology for current sensing. The three ring configuration with feedback can be used to design a very sensitive, very accurate and highly stable current sensor 
in which we have a sensitivity and accuracy and stability in the range of tens of ppm. This is very high. Now the fourth part of this presentation will cover a different approach in which we are using a magnetic flux concentrator and in this case we do have actually an IC that can help us so we don't have really to build all the electronics around it ourselves. It's a, a commercial unit that we can use and this will be presented and explained in this fourth part. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.